What's up again, everyone? Thanks for joining us on this lesson where we're going to tackle the question, how can we factor a trinomial when the leading coefficient is not 1? Okay, hang on a sec. How do we factor a trinomial when the leading coefficient is 1? Let's do a quick recap using the example x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, we can easily factor this by finding two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to 6, in this case 3 and 2, so x plus 3 times x plus 2 are our factors. And we can check our answer by multiplying these binomials together. x times x is x squared, x times 2 is just 2x, 3 times x is just 3x, and 3 times 2 is just 6. Then we notice that 2x and 3x, the terms in the middle are like terms, so we can combine them, 2x plus 3x equals 5x, and we notice that the trinomial that we started with is the same as the one that we finished with, and we know that our factors are correct. Now this method always works out this way because x times x is always going to equal 1x squared. So our factors will always just have an x term in each one without a coefficient. And that's why that method only works when a is equal to 1. But when that leading coefficient, that a value, is anything other than 1, let's say it was a 2, these factors would not apply anymore, and we're going to have to use a different strategy. So how exactly can we factor a trinomial when a does not equal 1? Now we are going to show you a conceptual method for factoring these kinds of trinomials. There are a lot of gimmicky kind of ways to do this, but we want to choose the method that has you thinking mathematically, because really we know you're not a robot, you're a critical thinker and a problem solver, and that's what we want to get you geared toward. So this method takes a few more steps, but it's worth it in the long run. So for our first example, we're going to go ahead and use the conceptual method to factor the trinomial 2x squared plus 1x minus 6. And that 1 in front of the x, that b term, we're going to kind of fade that out. Okay, remember that it's there, but you're not actually going to see it there in a problem. So first of all, we should notice that our a term, our leading coefficient, is 2, which obviously does not equal 1. So our normal method of factoring is not going to work on this example. Next, we should ask ourselves, can we pull out a GCF? And we should notice that... There is no common factor between 2, 1, and negative 6, so we actually cannot pull anything out. So now we're going to go ahead and use that conceptual method. And the first step of that method is to multiply a and c together. So we have 2 times negative 6, a times c, which equals negative 12. So that was our first step. Our next step is to factor and replace b. So we want to factor that negative 12 to make it represent our b term, which is positive 1. So we know that negative 12 is equal to 4 times negative 3. And we're choosing those values because they add to positive 1, which was our b term. So this is what we mean by replace b. Instead of 1x, we're going to replace that with two terms, in this case, 4 and negative 3. But instead, we're going to say plus 4x and minus 3x. Again, that still represents that 1x. Our third step is to split and find the GCF. Now, what that means is we're going to split this thing right down the middle in between the two terms that we just added. So now we have a left side and we have a right side. So from here, we want to pull out a GCF from each side. On the left side, the GCF is 2x. And when I pull 2x out of 2x squared, I'm left with x. And when I pull 2x out of positive 4x, I'm left with positive 2. And now I do the same thing on the right side. I pull a GCF from negative 3 minus 6x. That common factor is negative 3. When I pull negative 3 from negative 3x, I'm left with just x. And when I pull negative 3 from negative 6, I'm left with positive 2. Okay, so we're at the finish line here. The final step is to identify the factors. Now notice that inside parentheses on both sides, I have an x plus 2 term. So that's going to be one of our factors. 
and then outside I have a 2x and a negative 3. Now if you use the distributive method of multiplying binomials, this should look familiar, and we should know that we can rewrite this in a different way, and that is as two factors, one as 2x minus 3, and the other as x plus 2. So now that we have our factors, let's do a quick check to make sure that our answer is correct. And we can do this by multiplying the binomials together. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And again, we notice that the middle terms are the same. We can combine them to get 1x. And we're back with the same trinomial that we started with. And our factors work out. Now, if that's the first time you've ever solved a trinomial like that, chill for a second because I know it's going to seem kind of complicated, but I promise you if you practice this a few times and get those steps down, you're going to be fine. So let's go ahead and look at another example. So for this next example, we want to factor the trinomial 4x squared minus 15x plus 9. And again, we should notice that we cannot pull a GCF from this trinomial. So our first step is to multiply a and c, or 4 times positive 9, which we know is 36. Next, we have to find two factors of 36 whose sum is negative 15. And we should come up with negative 12 and negative 3, since negative 12 times negative 3 is positive 36. And now we can replace that middle minus 15x term with our new terms minus 12x and minus 3x. Our third step is to split down the middle and pull out the GCF. So on the left side, the GCF of 4x squared minus 12x is just 4x. When I pull 4x from 4x squared, I'm left with x. And when I pull 4x from negative 12x, I'm left with negative 3. On the right side, the GCF is negative 3. And when I pull negative 3 from negative 3x, I'm left with just x. And when I pull negative 3 from positive 9, I'm left with negative 3. And finally, I'm ready to identify my factors. We see that they both have an x minus 3 in common, and then our outside terms are 4x and minus 3. So we can conclude that our first factor is 4x minus 3, and our second is x minus 3. So using those four steps, sums up the conceptual method for factoring any trinomial where a does not equal 1. And you can go ahead and multiply those factors together to check that your answer is correct, but that's pretty much how you do it. So just keep those steps in mind, and remember, the more you practice, the easier this will get. So thank you again for stopping by. I really hope this was helpful, and we'll see you guys again next time. Ha <laughs> ha, cool. Hey guys, thanks again for checking out that lesson. And remember that we are on Twitter at MashupMath. So please give us a follow and share some love. We'd love to hear what you think. Make some requests, video requests, whatever you want. We'll listen to them. I promise you, we want to hear what you're thinking. We'll see you next time. 